Are you wearing the, sh- the Chanel boots? Yeah, I am. Chanel, Calvin Klein, John Galliano, Marc Jacobs. What is the total cost? Almost $1 million was spent on a wardrobe for the Devil Wears Prada, which makes it one of the most expensive in the history of cinema. And what about the rest of the movie masterpieces? Today, we'll go through a list of 12 movies with the most brilliant costume designs in the history of cinema and find out how to spend $35 million on costumes without adding any special effects, what outfits use more than a million Swarovski stones, which, by the way, couldn't be washed during filming, what does the color purple of Queen Elizabeth's dress mean in the film The Golden Age, and who allowed Kira Knightley to start each day of filming with a choice of jewelry? So what do we have here? Oh, yes. Where are we without a unique golden age with Kate Blanchett in the title role? The costume designer, Alexandra Byrne, fully focused her attention on the color rendition of the outfits, which reflected the mood and experiences of a certain stage of the queen's life. Red and orange dresses symbolize the coronation and power. Dark colors convey the state of the heroine in a period of disappointment and the most difficult trials. Like in this moment, where she's in an emerald green dress and here in a purple one during the execution of her half-sister in the war with Spain. Symbolically, it turned out very interesting. The red color of Mary, spilled blood, is superimposed on the blue color of Elizabeth. And voila, here it is, purple. In addition, purple was considered the color of mourning in this era, so it is not accidental here. $35 million, and not a single special effect. Critics were outraged. Meanwhile, the lion's share of funds went to tailoring costumes. Three outfits were exact copies of the real dresses of the English Queen Victoria, mourning, wedding, and coronation, and each of them appeared in the final movie only for a few seconds of screen time. To be more precise, the wedding dress was made of silk, decorated with voluminous flowers and a geometric schnip, sharp-nosed cape, which made Emily Blunt's waist extremely thin. The look was completed with an antique silk veil that Sandy Powell, the costume designer, had found specifically for the film, and a chain with the garter of the Order of St. George. Yes, I hadn't forgotten about him either. Since the direction of the film is ironically utopian, it was decided to take the colors fabulous, rainbow. The top five are red, pink, yellow, gold, and the leading purple. The choice of felt fabric was also not accidental. Costume designer Milena Cananero said in an interview that it is felt that it is most often used in the tailoring of military uniforms. So that's why throughout the film I felt something was wrong. Did you also have this feeling? Write it in the comments. The costumes of the characters have a hidden meaning and reveal their characteristic features. So the golden dress symbolizes the setting sun, and the gray and black uniforms become a sign of the approaching darkness of the city. Eddie Sedgwick is such a fashionista. It had everything the 1960s were famous for. Rethinking fashion, beauty, luxury, and dress code. Crazy energy, challenges, and naivete at the same time. Pop art, thrash, and rock and roll. Among the many stylish heroines of that time, she shone the brightest. Not for nothing did the IMDb website describe her as a bright social butterfly. 40 years later, John Dunn became the best expert on Eddie's style when he became the costume designer for the movie Factory Girl, where Sienna Miller plays the main role quite well. Scrupulously studying the archives, Dunn was struck by the fantasy of the heroine of the film. He said that she did not have a favorite designer, guru, or stylist, like all current style icons. She came up with everything herself, and I am personally delighted with her style. Kirsten Dunst, who played the main role, showed almost 70 dresses in the film, as well as jewelry, shoes, hats, and complex hairstyles decorated with feathers and ribbons. According to the costume designer, Melina Cananero, Coppola gave her a box of pastel-colored macaroons and said that she would like the outfits to be made in such colors. Cananero also admitted that she did not try to bring the costumes into maximum compliance with the fashion of the 18th century. She simplified them and considered their stylization, although made them quite detailed. Silk, taffeta, and satin were used for sewing dresses. In addition, vintage lace of the 18th century and original men's vests of the era were involved. There is a shot in the film where Marie Antoinette tries on shoes, and Converse sneakers flash among her shoes. Have you seen it? A film that definitely needs no introduction. 
The hyper on clothing appeared even earlier than it was possible to see it on the big screens, and the premiere instantly gave rise to the creation of many fashionable collections of dresses based on The Great Gatsby. A collaboration between artists Catherine Martin and Senorita Mirucho Prada led to the creation of real masterpieces. About 40 dresses were sewn, all models were presented at the exhibition in New York. The director did not set out to make the film historically authentic, but the costumes fully conveyed the atmosphere of the 20s. Short dresses, deep necklines, boas made of bird feathers, an abundance of embroidery with glass beads and sequins. Daisy's dresses and Jay's costumes deserve a separate documentary and exhibition. The picture owes much of its popularity to them. Just remember how many Gatsby-style parties you were invited to after the premiere. People aren't invited to Gatsby's. Well, I was. Costume designer Julia Weiss says that it was impossible to compete with Kahlo's unique style, but she's proud of the movie's costumes. Weiss and her team scoured all the vintage clothing stores in Los Angeles and Mexico City. The artist considered it important to dispel the misconception that Frida's native country was backward and provincial. She tried to show in the film all the richness of colors in Mexico, the elegance of his intelligence, and also used the bright colors that Frida loved, fuchsia, deep red, and tropical green. It would seem that there are still so many self-portraits of Frida with carefully drawn costumes. Take it and copy it, but no. For the tango scene, Weiss tried to make a copy of the dress from one of Kahlo's self-portraits, but it didn't work and she decided that the costume should remain in the picture. Instead, the designer found a bright red dress and cut it a little shorter. Remember Selma Hayek's tango with Ashley Judd? This scene became one of the most expressive moments in the film. 88 images for the film were created by costume designer Julian Day, and by the way, he decided to create the image of a glamorous devil and break all fashion standards. These are extremely stylish boots of my own design. As a result, we see Elton John in an orange Lego jumpsuit with a flame pattern, wings of fiery red feathers, a headdress with horns studded with crystals, sunglasses in the form of hearts, and sequined shoes. And this is just one of dozens of costumes for the film. More than a million crystals were provided by the Swarovski company, which were manually sewn on tailcoats and rocket emblems. Remember the moment when the musician performs at Dodger Stadium? By the way, this costume is the only one that is made according to the prototype of the singer's real clothes. However, it couldn't be washed because of the numerous sewn crystals, and he had to wear it for three months. And at the end of this period, the entire film crew tried to stay away from the main actor, Taron Edgerton. Then we move on to one of my favorite movies. The outfits do not pretend to be historically accurate at all. Obviously, that's why residents of Japan did not like the picture. Even so, I think the film is incredibly beautiful. Colin Atwood, having studied the traditional Japanese kimono in great detail, decided to give it a new life. And there's nothing wrong with that. Obi belts were tightened on actresses much more tightly than Geisha did in reality, and some traditional colors were also changed. A different color palette was chosen for each character, red, green, and blue, for the cunning Hatsumomo, sky blue, purple, for the balanced Mameo, dark muted colors for a poor girl's clothing, and bright colors for her when she becomes a beautiful Geisha. One of the highlights of the film is the Sayuri dance. For him, a silvery white kimono was created with red trim on the edge of the sleeves of the lower kimono. Colin Atwood created a complex, fascinating, mysterious, and fragile world for this picture and won a second Oscar. This is not the first time that Jacqueline Duran has worked with Keira Knightley. The emerald green silk dress gathered at the waist from the movie Atonement was also created by her. In an interview, the fashion designer said that Kira Knightley began each day of her shoot with a selection of jewelry that was laid out on the table in front of her. This was necessary to immerse herself in the image of the heroine. The cost of some jewelry reached $2.5 million. As for the outfits themselves, Jacqueline was inspired by the fashion of the 1950s because, on the one hand, this is a time of rigid frames and an architectural approach to design, no frills in decoration, and on the other hand, in this era, there was a place for a kind of romance. Well, what about everyone's favorite, The Devil Wears Prada? The costume design cost the filmmakers $1 million, making it one of the most expensive films ever made. Miranda's necklace alone was worth $100,000. 
Patricia Field, who worked on Sex in the City, and most recently on Emily in Paris, was responsible for recreating this colorful microcosm of the fashion world. One of the most iconic scenes is the one in which Andy Sachs finally accepts the position as an assistant at a fashion magazine and walks around New York. The first luxury image of the heroine smashes on the spot. This is a bold combination of a vintage Chanel jacket, mini skirt, and high boots. A very assembled top loaded with textures supports a minimal bottom. The glossy leather on the boots contrasts well with the jacket, and the edging of the lapels visually narrows the waist. To recreate dresses for middle-class women with a feminist spirit, Jacqueline Duran studied photos of radical women who lived in the 19th century, Megan Lavender, Beth in brown and pink, Amy in blue, and Joe puts on red and indigo. Amy is the main fashionista among the sisters. Her style is inspired by Impressionist paintings, which she admires. As befitted the Victorian era, shirts, corsets, bodices, trousers, petticoats, and crinolines were created for the girls. Although a pronounced non-conformist Joe refused to wear a corset and instead wears ordinary wool skirts and even wears trousers instead of skirts, so the viewer sees much more freedom in her movements. Costumers took liberties in male images as well. You will not see the hero of Timothy Chalamet in loose-cut jackets, because they absolutely did not suit the actor. This is a case of when the costume designer allowed herself to deliberately break some of the fashion rules of the era in order to best reveal the images of the characters. What do you think? Do you agree with my list of films? Let's discuss it in the comments. If you liked it and you want to see more of this kind of content, put a like and I will know that you are interested in it. Well, you know where the subscribe button is. Otherwise, how will you know about the new video? See you!